So as we're moving along, doing some more things, getting the back doors done, now you guys saw that I'm using half lap joinery to put those doors together, and I thought maybe it'd be a good time for a neat little history lesson on uh, some of the old joinery of the world and the early origins, things like that, where the stuff comes from. And a lot of it dates back to the Neolithic period, which started 12,000 years ago, something like that. The oldest known surviving wooden structure was just found in Germany here not too long ago. A 7,000 year old well casing made from wood using the tusk, the tusk tenon joint. And in the simplest terms, a tusk tenon joint, it's hopefully you guys can see it. So you have, as soon as you see it, you will know what I'm talking about. You guys see it in a lot of furniture, especially the Japanese stuff. Tusk tenon is, and there's different examples, it is going to be a through mortise with a through tenon. And as in the case of the old well casing that they just found, it usually has a wedge to hold it all together. So you have a couple shoulders in here. This tenon is obviously narrower than this. Goes through, they wedge it. That's the old, right now, that is the oldest known surviving timber joinery or wooden joinery in the world. And that's pretty neat. 7,000 year old well casing, buried in the dirt, in the water, just discovered, still intact. That is friggin' amazing. You know, and uh, Stonehenge, Stonehenge also used a tusk tenon in the stonework, and you're talking Neolithic period, still, you know, and then, I don't know, it's just neat. I thought, uh, I thought some of you guys would find that interesting. That is, right now, the oldest surviving wooden joint in the world. And so, people who tell you that Old joinery and stuff like that, why would you do it the modern stuff so much better? When you see examples like that, I think they're full of it. <laughs> I really do. Because that's the kind of stuff that survives thousands of years. Like I said, 7,000 years old. I'm freaking real. So I guess, I guess maybe we can get back to work now. Yeah, so I get asked quite a bit on this channel about, uh, over the last few years, had a good amount of comments on wondering, wondering what the draw is, what makes timber stuff so much better than conventional construction, you know, and it's funny. I don't see conventional construction as conventional construction. I mean, the, the methods we use today are nothing. I mean, this kind of stuff right here to me, if you look at the grand scheme of things, is more conventional than anything we we do today. And that's kind of what I like about it. I mean, I love history. History is one of my favorite things. And when you build stuff like this, you're building it, you're making history. Whether you're just doing a little garden shed, doesn't matter what you're doing, you are, you're making, you're following in the footsteps of your ancestors. And when I 
I say I don't see modern construction as conventional, how can something how can something that hasn't stood the test of time yet for thousands of years, like so many timber structures have, how can that be considered conventional? I, I just I don't see that wisdom. And I guess we'll find out in a thousand years what's standing from today and what's not. It's just kind of, it's just a neat topic. Always something to think and consider on. No, I'm not putting down, I'm not putting down modern building techniques. I mean, I just don't see, I gotta be honest with you, I find myself fixing plenty of stuff that's only 25, 30 years old because it couldn't stand up. And uh, I have been a part of repairing old timber frames over the years. And the methods they use two or three hundred year old structures. The only reason that the structures needed repair is because when people were doing the upkeep to them, they used modern methods. You know, painted the timbers or put friggin' mortar and shit to repair lime plaster on the outside of a building. And that's kind of I don't know, when you deviate from how the thing was built to make those repairs, it seems that's when it all goes south. You know, and you see people, and you see people cutting into supports, old supports. And replacing them with two by material, you know, that they got at Lowe's or Home Depot. And then they wonder why the rest of the why the rest of the timbered structure is starting to sag and fail, and then they say, oh that wasn't built worth a shit. And I've seen a lot of that over the years. And people just don't they don't understand it, so it's automatically a piece of shit. I don't know, it's just an interesting dynamic to me. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is it's with all these with all these really neat historical examples of the way people used to do things and the examples of those old ways that were done right surviving for thousands of years is just amazing. I mean, they figured out that the ancients figured out pretty quick what was going to last and what wasn't. I mean, they figured some of the uh, some of the early designs with just a simple post and lintel. And you can see it you can see it in uh, a lot of ancient architecture, a lot of early Roman stuff, uh, just a, lo a lot of uh, a lot of Asian stuff, things like that. But when you go back and look to where they started evolving in the way they were constructing, it's kind of neat. You know, they the Romans kind of mastered the art of building uh, arches. You know, and they were found that they can have much wider open spans and that kind of stuff is just cool. You know, you don't, um, they didn't rely on glues, they didn't rely on nails, they, you know, they just, everything was, everything was just kind of, 
held together with pegs and they used its own weight. I mean, the, the Romans did have concrete, but it's kind of not, not the same as what we would think today. It's just, uh, it's just neat. If you ever have time and you ever get bored, start perusing the internet, looking this stuff up, and it'll amaze you. Absolutely amaze you what you will find and how they used to do things and how things used to work. It's just, it's, it's really cool. But, I guess I've yacked enough tonight. I'm going to keep working on this, turn the camera off. I'm going to go in and edit, and then I have to be up very early. For about a two and a half hour drive to my first job in the morning, so... And we'll see you guys on the next one.